problem. There's, there's, there's no objection with requiring some form of identification. Right. In fact, there is already a requirement for identification, and that is when somebody shows up at the polls, they have to sign the book, and they compare your signature to the signature that they have on file. And that's a system that has worked very well, and the proof of that is that the Commonwealth has now admitted that they don't even know of a single instance of voter fraud. Not, not just no prosecutions of voter fraud, but they don't even know of a single reported instance of in-person voter fraud. And I think what is particularly significant is that in all of this time where the state is saying we need this law because we have all this in-person voter fraud, it's undermining the integrity of the elections, they have not identified a single instance of voter fraud. Today, in one day, the court heard from six individuals, six real live individuals, all with different stories, different backgrounds, real people with families and jobs and histories, and Ms. Applewhite who marched with Dr. Martin, Martin Luther King. And these are all individuals who, as the law stands right now, would not be able to vote in November. These are all people who no one would question that they have a constitutional right to vote. They're registered, they're citizens, they're 18 years of age. Some of them have been voting since the 1940s and have not missed a single election, and now all of a sudden the Commonwealth's telling them, oh, if you don't have the right kind of ID, you can't vote, and these people don't have the right kind of ID, and you've heard they've tried to get that ID and been unable to do so. I mean, this is, this is going to not only undermine the integrity of the election, if this law is allowed to stand and thousands of people are turned away from the polls, the legitimacy of Pennsylvania's election in November will be called into question.